This LARP is rated M21+, plus for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. It's good to see you again. And I'm back, dressed as Odette, to talk to you guys about Malleus episodes 1 and 2. Um, as I'm filming this, uh, it's been about a week since episode two and probably about three months since episode one. So I'm going to do my best and recap all of like the major events, including pictures and whatnot of episode one and get into the details of episode two. So, um, where we last left off, I kind of gave you guys an overview of the game. And, uh, you know, what's really cool is that Malleus is an ever-growing experience. So even from the last time I talked to you guys about the game, um, the rules have been updated. Things have been changed. And that's pretty neat. Also, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Athena's Nemesis for first off, giving me the broom of my dreams and the baguette of my dreams. You can bet that I used them this weekend, of course, with my other props that had been featured in my previous video, but it was so cool finally to have like, oh, my LARP broom and baguette, like it was, it was amazing. So uh, thank you guys so much. I, I got it as a gift from them on my birthday for a photo shoot that we had did for Pride Month. So it's just like, these, these, this is really great. If you guys want one, I'm gonna put a link down below for um, the broom and the baguette uh, because these are so awesome. And I mean, look at it, come on. LARP bread, bonk. <laughs> so going back to episode one, um, let's see where we can start. So uh, I will say that I actually do cook at every single game. So I actually do provide food. Um, we usually do a donation bucket for about a week before the game and it's pay what you can. And it's, and the food is open to any everybody. This is like a community thing. This is like, you know, it's our food. You know what I mean? Uh, at this time, um, it was a little cold. So it was like April when we were playing the first event. So I had my other outfit on, which was featured in my previous video, which is like a wool heavy outfit. This is Odette's summer slash spring outfit that I have. And hopefully I'll I'll be adding more looks to her arsenal soon. Um, but it was, it was really cool because what we did for the tavern for episode one was that it was kind of in a pavilion-like space, but we put like these canvas walls around to kind of keep in the heat. And the staff was really sweet and actually got a fire pit for the tavern too, so people would stay in there and be warm by the fire. Uh, for episode one, uh, it opened up with Odette just manning the bar like usual and you know, going about her, her evening. Um, <laughs> usually the, the first night is, is very fun because it's like everybody kind of getting into game and ev you know, serving everybody. Um, I do not believe anything really crazy that happened on Friday night besides a pretty good philosophical slash religious debate because I've been really wanting to lean into the fact that Odette is um, devout and I and, and the rhetoric that comes with being devout, like the mental gymnastics that she has to make to get to her point or to justify certain actions. That's something that I, I really enjoy playing with. So there was, I do remember there was a conversation between um, a couple of the mages, a couple of the Markland soldiers and Odette at the, at the table and, and Dr. Simeon. And they were all debating like, you know, Solkhan's righteousness and, and things like that. And I remember people being like really disturbed about how like uh, very much Odette's faith was not just based in her love for Solkhan, but the fear of Solkhan as well. Day two was really where most of the fun began. Um, so Odette got up. Um, you know, we st I started prepping food. Um, I went outside and uh, Adalia, I think that's how you say her name. Um, she's one of the bards uh, and she is like the bard of Markland basically. And <laughs> she was playing on this like little harp thing and you know, Odette goes, oh, well that, that's so cool. Can I, can I try? And she goes, oh, of, of course Odette. And so, you know, I sit down, I, I take the thing and she goes, oh, and you can twist these little things to tune it. And I was like, oh, cool, great. So I, I played a couple of strings and then I went to tune it and it was like a moment 
from a cartoon where I tuned it and it went <laughs> and a string broke. And everybody just, I looked at her, she looked at me, I looked at everybody, everybody looked at me, and everybody just broke out laughing. And and thank you so much to the player of Adalia. Like, she she wasn't, like, angry or anything like that. Apparently the string, the string had broken before, but it was just, it was pretty good comedic timing without me trying to be funny. <laughs> there were also a lot of um, soft and small conversations that Odette had while she had a couple of people helping her cut vegetables, again with Adalia and uh, Bess. Bess is the local um, prostitute slash like comfort girl that works in Markland, uh, played by the same player who played La Lady Imogen, but this is their alternate character now that Imogen is now part of Lioness. Um, it was really, <laughs> it was fun because our major threat that um, that event was like bandits and so everybody was really afraid of getting robbed <laughs> and <laughs> um, there had been a couple a couple of kerfuffles and kerfuffles that afternoon and unfortunately uh, Rata, the rat catcher, had died and um, Odette was the only one at the time that had uh, the ability to bring her back. So Odette uh, was called from the bar after preparing for the stew to bring Rata back and to pray over her body um, for, uh, for the light of Solkhan to, to fill her. It was kind of funny because there was the, the, the brother, uh, brother, is it a tep, a brother Atepis? A, a, a step. I don't, oh, I'm so bad with pronouncing names. All names are gonna be down below as always. But um, he was there too. And I, I remember him looking at me and being like, well, you might have to do what must be done. And I went, what? And he handed me a knife. And I was like, what, what, what? And I, I'm like shaking there and like Rod is not really waking up but I keep praying anyway. And then eventually I'm about to be like, I'm about to lift it up to kill Rada and oh, she wakes up, thank God, good timing. <laughs> um, and thus Rada is brought back to life a little shaken up. Um, uh, she go Odette after that she went back to like continue prepping things and whatnot um, Oh, and then she went to do her religious observance And so the thing is when you're playing a devout character um, You can do religious observance um, by the shrine and that gives you an extra use of iron willed which meant that if a being, uh, whether it be a bandit or a witch or some type of demonic creature were, was trying to use the powers of ruinous forces or corruption to mess with your character's mind, um, I would have one free use to resist that because I'm filled with prayer because I'm a good Sulcanite. Now it was also during this day too that um, Odette received a black rose from uh, a handsome gentleman from Wolfland and at the time she was the only one that had gotten this rose and nobody really knew what it meant She didn't really know knew, know what it meant um, And she kept getting a lot of information from conflicting sources So some people said that it was a marriage proposal and that the man was a noble No debt should be very happy because this this is a good thing. Hasn't she wanted to get married and then um, there were some that said it was just a mark of, uh, of beauty, and then there were some that said it was a mark of death. So Odette was like, great, so I'm either gonna get married or I'm gonna die. What else is new? And it was, the gentleman's name was Thornvik. And so Odette went up to him at one point, and she just, she just straight up asked him like, yo, why did you give me this? What, what, uh, what does this mean? And, uh... He said that, oh, if I can like vaguely remember that it was, it was a mark of beauty. It was that uh, he saw her as a beautiful woman and this was appreciation of that beauty um, as the roses were very rare from where he was from. I, I think by the end of the day, almost all of the uh, female characters had received a rose, which it was very sweet. But it was also during this afternoon that uh, Odette got a letter delivered to her. Now, unfortunately, our poor little village babe can't read or write. And <laughs> she gets this letter and she's like, I, I don't know what this says. Um, I still have the letter in my possession, but <laughs> she had to get somebody to read it to her. And it was, it was a love letter. And it was a very lovely love letter that talked about her beauty and everything about her. And everyone was like, damn, damn where's, who, who sent you this? Where's this from? And she was like, 
I have no idea, frankly. I have no idea where this anonymous love letter was from. And so she just kind of kept it on her person and she was very happy about it all day. And <laughs> as, uh, as dusk began to, began to fall, she went up to Captain Rosmus to, to show him the letter that she had received because it was, uh, no, it was said that there were going to be a couple of bandits that were going to try and siege um, the, the fort where they were at, the sanctuary. And so Odette put a pot on her head, had her breadboard in hand and was ready to fight. And she went up to Captain Rosmus and was like, Rosamus, I got a letter. And he's like, you did? From whom? She's like, I don't know. I think it's a love letter. That's what everybody keeps telling me. And so she gives it to him and got to give it to Rosamus and the player of Rosamus. He read the whole thing and he's like, <laughs> well, I think it's tried. And Odette was like, trite? You think it's trite? But why? And he goes, well, you know, it's not really talking. It, it, it's talking about these grand concepts. And Odette was like, I cannot believe my friend says that the first love letter I've gotten ever in my life is trite. Well, maybe it was because he was jealous. Who knows? But the dusk assault happened. And unfortunately, Captain Rasmus was taken under capture and he was shot and killed. Uh, which of course disturbed Odette greatly and if the road wardens die that's like super bad because they're they're like the the cops so essentially if the road wardens die then the guild masters that come to collect the witch stone don't feel safe enough to come into the dragon wall to do so and thus they won't and thus no witch stone is collected and nobody can gain favor for the entire event which is pretty bad so Rasmus is dead and they I I remember running up to his body and, and Odette is crying and uh, she goes, bring him into the chapel. I will pray over his body. And man, oh man, uh, Odette's like screaming and crying over Rias' body like, please, please, please bring my friend back, please. And she, his head is on her lap and she's crying over him and slowly but surely she starts to feel a vague heartbeat in the cavern of his chest and it, his chest starts to raise and he starts to mumble and the first thing he says is milk M milk M M mommy and everyone was like oh god oh god uh go get best go get best <laughs> because uh, because uh best is very w well endowed <laughs> um and also <laughs> Rosmus is well known in this game, and the player of Rosmus is well known for like drinking copious amounts of milk. Um, so it was, it was all in good fun, but he starts to stir, and after she keeps praying over him, Rosmus opens his eyes, and he looks at her and he goes, Oh, you're, you're beautiful. And Odette just goes, Ugh. He'll be fine and pushes him off her, her lap and they go and they and the doctors come and treat him uh, and he gets up and he walks down with her back to the tavern and he was like, you know, I, I almost let myself go into the darkness, into the abyss. She was like, but you couldn't. I'd miss you. And he went, well, I didn't because I, I heard you your voice it enticed me to come back and Odette was like really and he was like yes you you saved me and she's like oh I'm so happy you're back Rosmus and of course they go and then she serves stew to everybody and now while she is at the bar she's approached by another peasant his name is Toulouse now, Toulouse is a lioness peasant, and his background is that the reason he got sent to the Dragonwald was that Toulouse is actually very smart, almost too smart for a peasant, and his family went into crippling amounts of debt, and so they got sent, to, they sent their son to the Dragonwald, really the debt collectors made them send their son to the Dragonwald, and thus Toulouse is there, but he's really smart, and he's fixed up, fixed up the tavern more than once, and so he came up to Odette, and they were chatting 
And, uh, you know, he was asking her questions about how she came upon this establishment and became the innkeeper. And, <laughs> and then one of the other members of Lioness also joins and we're all talking. And then we're like, well, Odette, you had to sign a paper for this to be your inn, right? And she was like, well, I, I, I did. Isidore made me sign something, but I, I don't really think I know what it said. And they were like, you signed something. You signed an imperial document with your name. They're like, you know how to spell your name. And she was like, oh, well, um, I, I, I was taught by the Reeve once. And they're like, okay, well then spell your name. And so she spells her name or what she thinks is her name. And I'm gonna spell it out for you guys. And then I will spell it out down below. Uh, and she goes, well, I believe my, my name is, um, it's spelled I, um, E, A, T, A, S, S. <laughs> to which, to, to which both of them were like, oh, dead stop. That's not your name. That is not your name. Don't ever, don't ever write that down ever again. Don't ever, just don't. Don't ever do that. Don't use, no, that's not your name. That is not how you spell your name, and that is incorrect. And she was like, oh. Oh, well, okay, but I thought it was, I thought it was correct. They're like, no, no, that's not correct. <laughs> um, and then uh, after more shenanigans, uh, she got to talk to Don Zaravo, and they had a couple of jests, and then uh, she went to bed. And now I will say, um, that Raquel, the LARPer, is very bad at playing Sundays. Because Sundays, that's a lot of effort to get up early in the morning. And do you want to know what I am not off game? I'm not a morning person. And so, Malleus is kind of the only game in which I allow myself to kind of... That and like Damarung, where I allow myself to kind of sleep in and maybe not even play on Sundays. Like, your girl is tired, okay? And, and I cook the whole event, so I'm usually pretty tired by Sunday. And whether or not I've meant to before, I just tend to sleep in. So I don't really play on, on Sundays. So um, I had woken up and basically the game, the game was over. And it was really sweet because everybody always gives me a round of applause at the end of the game for cooking. And it's just, it's very kind. Um, but yeah, so that was the recap of, of episode one. Okay. Now, it's time for episode two. Now, seeing as this is the most recent episode that I literally just came back from, I'm gonna be able to give a little bit more detail. Um, but we were at, uh, so the actual campsite that we use for Mally's changes, and it's supposed to also represent the changing, like, sanctuaries and expeditions that we all go on. Um, and so, it was uh, the beginning of the game, so we had like workshops and everything like we always do, and Marklin's in the tavern, like almost the entirety of Marklin. And this was a really cool game because we had a lot of new players in Marklin, which was really neat. Um, and so the captain calls Odette up in front of everybody, like the Baroness, all the soldiers, and he goes, for your outstanding dedication and your outstanding work here in the Drakenwald, we would like to present you with a seal. And of course she can't read it. So they hand it to her and she's like, what does it say? And they're like, oh, well it says, and I'm, I'm reading it off of here. So it says, uh, quartermaster of the Black Watch, Drakenwald 1522. So uh, she got, uh, now is officially the quartermaster. And this also corresponded um, to a really cool thing that happened off game where um, about a week before game, um, I got a call from the two head game runners and they had asked me to formally be the innkeeper. So essentially it's just that I get like, I don't change anything about what I've been doing or how I've been playing Odette, but I now have like an official title to, to go with it. And so now um, off game, I can ask players if they would like to play peasant alt and like help serve me in the tent if they want to kind of like have a break from playing their character or something like that, which, you know, I, I just think it's really cool. I've really enjoyed um, putting the tavern together and manning that space. So I was really honored for the team to, to ask me to be uh, the innkeep. It was, thank you guys, that meant a lot to me. And also like to be a quartermaster, like, come on, that's so cool. Our girl's moving up in the world. 
So she she basically got got this the seal and then she ran off into the kitchen um, and of course, you know, I, I, I prepare like plates of hors d'oeuvres and, and things like that and charcuterie boards. So um, that's that's what she does. And she sits around and uh, serves people at the bar. Now, um, our threat for this past event was beast men. And so uh, very scary. Uh, now, there were a couple of points where they had uh, a couple of people had asked her to go on an expedition, uh, but she had to man the bar, so she couldn't go. Not yet, at least. Around, I believe, like 1 a.m., there was a pit fighting thing that had uh, been, now, like, we have a Discord for Malleus, and so in the Discord, it was like a thing that was posted that it was a thing that players could do and interact with, and it was, hold on, I'm gonna read it to you. It was the Petite Fights. Uh, win fortune and glory. Fighter's entry fee at three marks by 11 bells. Winner takes a prize. Weapons drawn by fair lots. No armor excepting belts, bracers, gloves, helmets, greaves, mask, or face coverings required for all fighters. Fight will continue until surrender by Mioso. Misio? Misio? I think it's I think it's mercy. I don't know. I can't read. Sorry. Mutual unconsciousness or fistic amputation of no fewer than three limbs has been visibly and satisfactor satisfactorily achieved. The fight organizers have forbidden the use of outside weapons as well as the use of any drug or psychic accepting potions, opium, chaga, crimson shade, or mandrake. Fighters will be healed between by uh, by a medic to state uh, necessary for their continued competition. Hiring healers, surgeons, and broady entertainers. Seek Don Zaravo or Moises Braham and jo <laughs> Jozon of Wolfland for all inquiries. So it's a it's a cute little, it's, I'll post like, the, obviously you can't see it on my phone, I'm a dummy, but uh, I'll post a little poster here. It was, it was really cool. And so it was kind of like, like a WWE fight. Like that's why people had to wear masks. So there were um, different uh, titles of, of people and it was supposed to keep their identity. And this was all happening outside of the boundary, boundaries of the sanctuary. And now you have to understand fighting like this is a sin, but of course Odette went anyway. And it was it was very fun. And she got to sit next to the Baroness. She, ha uh, she had gone down there serving like, you know, water and all sorts of hors d'oeuvres and things like that. Um, and, and wines and cheeses, uh, but the Baroness uh, told her to sit down and watch the fights, which was very kind of her. The fighters were, these are all their names, we had uh, the Gilded Corsair, Skullbreaker, the Rat Bastard, the Crow of Magden, the Blade of Wrightsburg, and El Mateo. And so it was it was super fun because I I played Odette like super super face blind. So even though it was like really obvious who was who even by like name. So for instance Rat Bastard was was Rata, the rat catcher. Um, <laughs> and um, and the Blade of Reisberg was Milos, one of the new soldiers. Um, Odette just like had no idea. She was just like, "Wow, I I'm, I'm their biggest fan." And it was it was just so fun to play this like dumb vapid fangirl for all of these fighters. And so um, Odette also bet a Fennec. Now a Fennec is represented in game by an actual real world penny. Um, and they're worth nothing. Like it takes a hundred, a uh, hundred Fennex, I think. Either a hundred or 250 Fennex to make up like a silver mark. I think it's a 250. Uh, and so she bet uh, a Fennec and, uh, and she won. So she bet on um, the Rat Bastard and she bet on the Blade of Wrightsburg. And they, they both won their respective fights. It came down to um, the Gilded Crosshair and the, um, the Blade of Wrightsburg. She, she took her winning, she didn't bet a third time. But they, the Don Zarabo was like, all right, this is the last fight. So give a favor to some lovely maiden or friend uh, that you would like to, you know, bestow your virtue upon. And so um, Odette is sitting there and the Blade of Wrightsburg, he had no favor except the bandages that have been wrapped around his bloodied chest. So he unwraps his pussy, bloody bandages, and he hands them to Odette as favor, in which Odette is like, mm, 
Oh, thank you. Mm, that's great. What, I love that. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much. Ooh. And she's like, oh God, they smell so bad. She's like, they smell so bad. And so um, one of the uh, soldiers that sat next to her, George, it was so funny because he actually had like a little, a bottle of like, I guess like perfume. And so he sprayed it on the bandages and it was like a really well, good smelling, like actually good smelling patchouli. And so then the bandages actually like, oh, I was like, oh man, actually you smell really good. <laughs> and so she's, she's cheering for the blade of Reichsburg and she's like, oh, you know, I hope you win. <laughs> you know, you'll win, you'll win. And he dies. <laughs> He gets brutally and totally hacked to bits with an axe. <laughs> and everyone starts to be like, hmm, well, he was doing great. And then he gave Odette the favor. And then he lost. Hmm, maybe Odette is cursed. And she was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not cursed. And of course, it was so funny because the priest was there and the priest was like, oh, well, you're going to have to repent for even being here. And she's like, I promise, I promise, brother, I'm, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray a lot. Please, I, I, I know Sokon will see me and he will forgive me for the sins that I've committed and I hopefully bring back the Blade of Reichsburg. And so after the battles were over, she went back to the bar and she's, you know, doing her thing, serving drinks to people and serving water. And um, so Milos comes up to her and he looked a little disheveled and she was like, oh, Milos, like, what can I get for you? And they start chatting and of course, you know, he, he asks for a drink, she serves it to him. And this guy just straight up goes, well, I was the Blade of Reichsburg. And Odette was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You would admit to committing such grave acts of sins? He's like, but I, you were cheering me on. And she's like, I would never do such a thing. That's sinful. I would never, I have no idea what you're talking about. You must repent for this. <laughs> like being a, like a nutto church girl is, it, it is so fucking fun. I can't, it is so fun. And like the player of Miles was just like, but, uh, okay. <laughs> and so uh, and she, she basically pretends that she, he didn't say anything to her and she ignores him. <laughs> and, and she talks to Rasmus, uh, which of course he's, he, he was very upset that um, Odette missed his puppet show. Uh, and it was, <laughs> it was apparently a very good puppet show and she missed it. And so hopefully she'll be able to catch the next showing. Uh, at the next event. I believe I just kind of wrapped things up and I, I went to bed, I blew out all the candles and I, I said that the bar was closed and I and I headed to bed. Um, and then after that, yeah, so sleep is what happened. Um, and then I got up the next day um, in the morning around like 10.30ish, um, got dressed. Now I will say on off game level, it takes me so long to get into this costume because like I have to lace this corset. It's a bunch of little pieces. I have to put on these tights. I have to put on the wig, secure it, do the makeup. Like it, I would say um, it probably takes me like if I'm being fast, it probably takes me about 20, a maximum of 30 minutes to do my makeup for Odette. But to actually get in her costume takes like half an hour. So it, it usually takes me about an hour until like I'm ready to, to get out and uh, and go play. And, and it's fun too, because I put my makeup on first and then the wig so that if people come in while I'm getting dressed, usually I have like tights and, or my underdress on. It's really funny because I can act like, oh, you, you peeping Tom. Um, that they came in and, and saw her. Uh, it's, it's very funny, but people are always, of course, very kind and respect boundaries. It's just a little joke. She immediately, I had to prepare lunch. So um, got up, started serving. Oh my God, it was like, it, she was running around like her head was cut off because it was, it was quite hot. So she had to serve a lot of water, which is good. I'm glad that players were drinking. It's important that everybody drinks. So she was serving a lot of water. Apparently there had been a couple of beast men sightings. And now Odette being the innkeeper and working at the bar, she hears a lot of rumors. And so um, part of the new mechanics change with um, her becoming the uh, innkeeper and the kind of new delving system is that uh, she kind of helps disseminate the rumors in the game, which is really cool. I have like a little sheet and kind of people ask me if they've heard anything and then I get to uh, give them a rumor from the sheet. It's very fun. Um, I, and I don't metagame with it. Like I don't take any of the rumors with me into delving or anything like that. But um, 
it's 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 a great it's a really fun and organic way to um, have a lot of interactions with people who want to know so there were plenty of people from temple and wolfland and markland and all the all the groups coming up and trying to get information from oda she i spent quite a good amount of time cooking um which was quite hot but i love that industrial stove that they have at this campsite it's oh it's so convenient um, and so I, I cooked, that took probably about an hour, fed everybody, um, and then she had to start preparing the stew. And so uh, she went out and she asked if there was anybody that would like to help her with this. And so um, Milos came up to her and was like, I will help you. And so she went, okay, well, come into the kitchen. And so Odette is, um, if there's one place in all of the Drakenwald where Odette gets a little mean, and a little controlling and a little power hungry it's the kitchen and so she basically was screaming at everybody to get out of the kitchen while she was cooking and it's also partially because i raquel the cook i hate when people are like just in the kitchen not doing anything when i'm like trying to move and do stuff so i always kick everybody out um <laughs> but it is an in-game at in, in this particular expedition uh site the the kitchen is kind of an in-game space though where people can interact with me in there and it's like um it, lo it looks a little bit thematic and we light it properly for uh thematic lighting so it's kind of cool that that people are, are able to come in and keep me company um and then after that uh, she went down to the river and so um, that's also the great part about this expedition site is that there's actually there is a really nice like swimming hole slash creek that is um, at the at the game space and so we all all the all the ladies and all the men we all get you know into our swimwear and we walk down to the river space and Odette has a basket filled with grapes and wine and um, it was, it was, and, and you know, obviously like glasses and, and things like that and blackberries to bring into the river. So it was a little bit decadent, um, but it was like the Baroness. It was um, Valentine, the captain of the Black Watch, uh, Milos. It was uh, the Duke uh, from Lioness, uh, the brother. Um, it was Lady Imogen and, hmm. Uh, George, it was a lot of people, like, and the Arbiter, uh, uh, the Ar so there are two Arbiters in Lioness, there is, um, Charlize and, uh, Sir Knox, that are Arbiters of the Lady, um, and so they also came down, and everybody, you know, it's, it's varying levels of comfort, but, uh, you know, we all get into the water in our chemises and stuff like that, or people put their feet in, whatever they like, and, oh man, I, I probably spent, like, an hour and a half down there in the river, it was uh, Odette's reward for, for cooking such a good lunch. And so uh, after that, um, we all go, we all walk back up and um, we, uh, Odette gets changed once again into her day clothes. And it actually felt nice because like I actually felt like I got to cool down and like get a little bit clean in the river, which was very, which was very nice. Because uh, it was it was hot. It was definitely uh, pretty darn hot. Now uh, this is around the time where the assault from the beast men began. So we had gotten back from the river, and Odette is still like her hair is down, and um, she's in her chemise, and the beast men come rolling in and attacks are like the, the sanctuary is being attacked thankfully none of them make it into the tavern but they make it right outside of the tavern odette is struck uh by a beast man in the arm with a spear and she falls to the ground and screams and thankfully uh, milos and i believe two other people came to her rescue and um, helped patch her up. It was it wasn't very fun. It was pretty painful. And uh, then after after the beast man encounter, um, she got formally dressed again, and then uh, went forward to you know make sure that dinner was ready to be served. Now. I had a, a, and of course I sit at the bar throughout the day and I interact with a lot of characters. Um, so the sun, the sun was setting and um, there was a rumor of a star fall that was going to be uh, happening, that the astronomers had gotten notice that a star fall was happening, which means a witch stone is gonna fall from the sky and into the game. And there was hopefully going to be a big fight over it with all everybody like kind of fighting every which way. Um, and it's really cool because they actually use like fireworks and things like that to, and pyrotechnics to show the explosion of, of it, which is like really cool. Um, and so Odette gets called for outside. And so like Marklin is having a little powwow planning on what they're gonna do. And so they call Odette over and they're like, Odette, 
we have a job for you. And she's like, M me? They're like, yes. They're like, we want you to shoot the cannon. And she goes, oh no, I can't do that. And they're like, oh yes, you can. We're gonna teach you how. It was because you, the Baroness, and we also had um, a new blacksmith as well. They're like, all three of you are going to stay behind and you're going to shoot anyone that comes through that path back from the starfall back into the sanctuary and you're gonna steal their witch stone. So Odette was like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot people that come through the path for their witch stone. And they go, yep, that's exactly what you're gonna do. And if anybody asks you what you're doing, you're shooting beast men. And she's like, okay. And so um, Hans, the lovely Hans, he goes over to the cannon with Odette and Baroness, and they basically uh, show how how to how to aim it and how to uh, how to use it. So it's actually a a real like cannon thing, and in it is it's basically like a slingshot mechanism where in which like it's a child's like slingshot, and um, it flies through the cannon once you pull it back far enough. So you basically load it, bring it back, let go, and it shoots through the cannon. And so. Hans teaches Odette how to shoot the cannon, and so the Baroness and the blacksmith are going to hold the cannon steady while Odette loads and shoots. And so um, they have us roll over uh, the cannon to this point in the path, and we hide behind it, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait. And we see the first, we see uh, a couple people come down the path, and it was actually the Temple Malleus that was supposed to be backing up Markland, but a Apparently they kind of just didn't give a shit and came late and didn't back up Markland. And so, uh, and they like went off path. They were like, yeah, whatever, we'll go help them eventually. It was really funny listening to their conversation as they walked by. And uh, they were just kind of like, yeah, what? okay, fine. Like we're gonna go support them. And they, they go through the path and whatnot. And so I, Odette does not shoot. Um, and then we see somebody else coming down the path and then we see the green rock in their hand because like we can hear the scuffling and the falling of the witch stone from up the path and so we see somebody with green rock in their hand which that is absolutely a witch stone and it they have this breastplate on and it was only and i mean only because of that breastplate and the wax seal that was on it that odette realized that it was milos holding that witch stone but odette looked at the baroness and looked at the blacksmith because he was looking at that witch stone like <laughs> not very nefariously and so she was like well that's Milos and he doesn't look so good and Odette went well maybe I should get the stone from him because I can touch it without becoming corrupted and the Baroness was like well dear I'm the one with the key to the box so maybe I should go meet up with him take the witch stone from him and put it in the box so that we know where it is so the Baroness runs off after Milos um, to go put everything in the lot box and make sure that he's not trying to steal that witch stone. Um, and so we're sitting behind the cannon and Odette loads it. I have it pulled back and we wait and we wait. And then we hear somebody else walking down that path. And without thinking, I hear somebody, they're pretty lined up with the cannon and like, okay. So this is probably the cringiest thing I'm going to admit and say. Um, on the internet. So I play a game called Paladins, and in Paladins, I main a sniper named Knessa. Now, Knessa, when she has her alt, she says, uh, try and run. And there's like this <laughs> sound every time you shoot. And I will say, cross my heart, in my brain, when I was shooting this cannon, and every time I shot it, which will be a couple of times, which you'll hear, Every time I shot it, I heard my Knessa in my head and I heard like the laser sound each time I let go of the of the of the slingshot. Um, which is like I know it's cringe, but I'm telling you the truth. So um we pull it back and we hit somebody. But who do we hit? We hit the priest! We hit our priest, I hit my priest. 
he was coming back and he had a witch stone on him but i didn't know it was him he was just wearing he was dark and so she's like oh god oh god i'm so sorry brother i didn't mean to shoot you and he's like oh god ah and he's like bleeding because she he got shot in the chest with a cannon and so the baroness literally comes back from the lot like locking the box with a. Uh, Milos and she's like oh my god and she helps she helps the brother up and she takes him back into the sanctuary and so literally it's just the blacksmith trying to hold his cannon down for dear life while I'm shooting it so the the Baroness takes in uh, the brother as well and uh, and of course like puts his lock uh, puts his stone in the lock box which like oopsie so sorry did I really I, on an off game level I actually did not mean to shoot the priest um, I can't say that for the next two shots that I did, but I, that one was truly an accident, which is kind of hilarious. The, okay, time passes. I have it loaded again. I have it pulled back, and I hear this voice that I know, and I see a feather in a hat, and oh boy, it's Don Zaravo, the privateer. And I literally pull that back. He gets right in front of the cannon. Boom! I let go. And, um... <laughs> Try and run. Boom! Hits him straight in the center of the chest. And it was so funny, because the, the Don's reaction was like, Oh! Oh! I've been shot! And then he just drops to the floor, and he's like, he's like screaming and writhing. And it's while he's on the ground. I, I guess Milos had gotten back into the battle after delivering the Witchstone, but he had come running full speed down the path. He completely collides and trips over Don Zarabo's body. It was like watching a actual cartoon reel happen in real time where like Don's is on the uh, is like on the ground Milo's is running trips does like a freaking somersault on the ground and like is face down and then they were both like oh god oh god and of course the players were okay and they checked in with each other off game it was an accident but they, they checked in with each other off game they were fine um but yeah that that was that was pretty that was pretty funny um and then so she shot the Dawn and nobody nobody saw her do it, right? Like the Dawn just got shot and people helped him because Odette and the, and the Blacksmith, they just got really quiet and hid behind that cannon. It was so dark and the cannon was well hidden. Nobody saw that they were there, right? As, as more people are coming down the path, um, the captain from Marklin is talking with uh, the Dawn and uh, the Duke from Lioness also comes. But the problem was is that the freaking captain was in front of the freaking cannon and all I'm sitting there and thinking is like, you gotta move, captain. Move, captain. Move, captain. Move, captain. And then the Duke, he gets right in front of the cannon and boom! I shoot him point blank. And the Duke is like, oh God. And so the best is that, okay, so the Duke is played by my boyfriend, Nathan. And so he comes over off game and he's like, I didn't hear an explosion. And I was like, uh, we didn't, we don't have any, we didn't, we weren't given anything for the pyrotechnics. And I was like, and I hit you. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, okay, fine. I'll take the shot. So, <laughs> which I love you, baby. Thank you for taking the shot. And he go he, he goes, and he has like a whole breastplate on, which all of it's shattered. His breastplate's shattered, his ribs are shattered. And he's like, oh God, I've been shot. And at this point, people now realize that Odette is behind the cannon and she gets hit on the back of the shoulder with a hammer. And she's like, ow. And we all fall onto the ground and we're like, oh no, please, please, please don't hurt me. She's like, please, I I, I was just, I thought it was a baseman. I re I didn't mean it. I really thought it was a baseman. I, I just, and then somebody was like, who let? the fucking peasant man the cannon hello <laughs> which like i thought i thought that was brilliant um thanks for everybody so much for playing at that moment because everyone was like oh dead and like and, and here's the funny thing we've had that cannon for a couple of a couple of games now I, we've had it since season one and not a single person has landed a shot with that cannon until your girl. And I landed it three shots, three in a row, 
three fatalities almost. And uh, like if those if those guys didn't have armor on, they all would have been dead. Um, which is just it's just so funny. And everyone's like, cannot. They're like, Odette, you have a new career. We should send you to like the bombing school. Like you would be a great soldier. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm 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 good. I just let me just I'm just gonna bake my bread. Like I'm I'm good. But thank you. But the, oh, thank you. But no. <laughs> It's just like, it's so good. It's just so good. Like I, I couldn't have actually written it better myself. I was taken hostage by Lioness. So was Milos, so was the blacksmith. And so a couple of people were taken hostage. Uh, Hans was taken hostage. And so Lion, the, the Duke is going, after he had been healed and stabilized, he was ready to, um, you know, either hold them for ransom, hold people for ransom or whatever, whatever. Now. To give you, uh, we're gonna rewind the clock a little bit, but uh, now Charlize, Char Charlize had come up to Odette earlier in the day to help resurrect Delphine, one of their fallen people. Now, Odette did it for them, but on the caveat that they had to be brought into the temple shrine because the lioness believe in a heathen god named the Lady, um, which is, isn't real and only Solcon's real, so Odette could only pray over her using Solcon. And, but she did. And she did. And so Charlize was like, I owe you a favor. And so when Odette was captured at that cannon, Odette went, Charlize, please, I helped you. I helped you get Delphine. And Charlize went, my lady, it will be okay. On my honor. Or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But like, the Duke um, makes Milo's call out for help Nobody comes to his aid, so he makes uh, makes him run, uh, makes another another peasant run away, and so he comes to me, and then right before he's going to say, because they were absolutely going to hold me for ransom. I mean, I'm the innkeeper. I, Odette actually kind of has value, so yeah, she'd be great to be kidnapped or ransomed for, and so. Um, as before the Duke can say anything, Charlize is in front of him with her bow so like. I love the player of Charlize so much. I know I talked about them. I'm gonna be talking about them in my Dragon Fest US video, which is coming out soon. I'm, I'm working on it. But um, it was so great to see them again as their character post Dragon Fest. But they have this bow so low, almost like, almost kissing the ground. And they vouched for Odette's character. And so the Duke had no choice uh, but to let Odette leave because she insisted that it was an accident and Charlize backed her up. It wasn't an accident. But thanks, Charlize. <laughs> so she ran off, Odette ran back off, and um, she told the captain everything, and um, we actually ended up having a decent amount of witch stone uh, this game, and um, then it was just a lot of shenanigans uh, throughout the night, and a lot of, a lot of fun times, Odette serving, uh, many people and joking and singing. There were there were a couple of really great role play moments. Uh, again with Rosmus, where you know they just chatted with one another. And I think somebody somebody had suggested um, somebody like people had started to notice that whenever a guy had uh, been either betrothed to Odette or had expressed favor towards Odette, something terrible happened to him. Um, like the Blade of Wrightsburg and like Garlic Carl. Rest in peace, Garlic Carl. But people were starting to put together that Odette maybe hasn't gotten around very much. And <laughs> the best is that she had accidentally walked in on the Arbiter changing and um, saw his, what she called, a tail. And so everybody went, a tail? He had a tail? Is he mutated? If he's mutated, you could report him to the temple and get money. And she went, um, it wasn't on the back. And they were like, well, where was the tail? And she went, on the front. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, Odette, you, you, you dumb idiot. <laughs> And so a couple, so Milos and, uh, and Bess and a couple other people tried to, to talk to her about tails. Um, didn't really get through her thick skull, but you know, um, they tried, they tried. It was very funny. I made a ha I made my ham, that's right. I made my ham and I uh, got to serve it to everybody in Markland and a bunch of people came in. Now, uh, there were also a couple of interactions that had happened throughout the day that had payoff around this time at night. So for instance, um, earlier, 
that uh, afternoon, right before the Beastmen fight, um, there was a new soldier whose name was Otto. And Otto had asked for Odette to get him a drink. And he asked her, but he didn't call her by her name, nor did he address her politely. He went, girl, get me a drink. And she went, excuse me? That's not how you order a drink here. How dare you? You could ask nicely. And so to kind of make fun of him, one of the other nobles at the table asked like, so had like this uh, like 10 minute long thing in which he was like, oh, debt, da -da 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 -da, the, the most righteous and da -da 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 -da. and like, it was very funny. So I did, I brought them their drinks, but I brought Otto's warm and the other for the one who said the nice things, very cold. Now, uh, later that night, Otto, uh, Odette, he, he wanted another drink, and Odette was like, why should I serve you when you've been rude to me? And oh, he took her hand, and he got on his knees, and he looked up at her, and he said, oh, Odette, my lady, she, I, I was just acting that way to try to impress the other soldiers. He goes, and I should not have treated you as such. He goes, please accept my sincerest apology. And Odette's face got so, like my face, like red, 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 red as a rose. And uh, she was like, oh, it's fine. Thank you for your apology, bye. And she just like, I skipped off and, and just like ran away from him. <laughs> Um, and then, and then I like served the ham and all these other shenanigans happened and it was, it was so fun. We sang songs and, and we served meat and we had drinks. Um, and Odette was allotted to have some time off by the Baroness, which was, which was very kind of her. Um, and then all, well, I kind of, uh, walked around and went to, uh, a couple of different camps and areas and, and had a good time. Uh, jesting and hollering with everybody um, and then it, it had gotten pretty pretty late so um, Odette went to bed and, uh, and and that was and that was that um, the next morning um, I had woken up early ish to catch the end of the game but it was like it was so close to the end that there was no point in me getting in costume so I didn't but um, I basically got to, out of character, witness the um, the guildsmen come in, collect all the witchstone, and uh, for everybody to list basically their MVP, which was which was very cute. Um, and it was also found out that Rata had left Wolflin and is now part of the temple, which is like, okay, I, 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 that's cool. The rat catcher uh, is now part of the temple, Malleus, the, the warrior priests. Okay, <laughs> um, it was just, it was so funny. Um, and then uh, the guild master collects all the witchstone. Now the thing is, is that depending on how group your uh, how big your group is, is how much witchstone you would need to have like an adequate shipment, a poor shipment, adequate shipment, or um, an exceptional shipment. Now nobody got an exceptional shipment. We almost did, but out of everybody, Marklin had the most stones that was uh, given in to the Guildmaster, which means that out of 12 games, including the play test and a whole season, season two, episode two, Marklin finally won. We finally, finally won. And so um, I'm not 100% sure if that means we get favor or what really happens, or I think we just like, you know, it's like the role play of like having the good expedition. Uh, but it was it was very cool to actually have our, our team um, win. But yeah, it was it was a really, really fun game. I, I enjoyed all of it. The Beastmen were really scary. Um, and I can't wait for episode three. I, I think it's gonna be uh, a great time. Now, usually for, for Malleus, um, the game starts to ramp up in the fall. Like it gets a little bit extra scary in the fall. And I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for, um, for the spooky, for the spookiness to get real in uh, September and November. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about um, episode one and two of Malleus. And I'm going to try and continue to create these for each of the games that I go to. Um, episode two of Damarong is coming up at the end of August. So hopefully I'll be able to do a cool recap with that. 
Um, I'm also, like I said in the earlier in the video, I am uh, currently working on my Dragon Fest video. It is filmed. I'm editing it right now. It's very long. It's gonna be really long um and i have the footage from the team um as well like from the videographers and um and photos from the photographers so i'm working on it it's it's gonna take some time but it is coming um and yeah i hope you guys really enjoyed hearing about my adventures and misadventures in the dragon world with malleus and who knows what might happen with odette next will she finally find love or will he die once again will she get captured and murdered by something in the dragon world or will she be protected who knows i guess we'll have to tune in to episode three to find out <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in this was a lot of fun to kind of like go over my event i hope this isn't boring for any of you um i i hope listening to my larp shenanigans doesn't uh bore anybody to tears but <laughs> um it was it was really a, a great event and i i loved uh every part of it so uh can't wait for the next event and yeah all right guys i'll i'll talk to you next time and happy larping <laughs>